In this demonstration, you'll learn how to generate contacts using three different methods. The first two are automatic, through the use of a template or the interface generator. The third method is to manually set up contacts and modify contact properties. I'll start by selecting the structural template, and then select a static analysis. On the options list, I can specify if I want contacts in the interface of the bodies detected automatically. I'll select this option so that contacts are generated as part of the template process. I'll select the file for this crank assembly. AIM loads the geometry and sets up a simulation. In the Physics Solution task, you can see that AIM automatically generated two contacts for this case. Let's take a look at these contacts. This first contact is between the crank and the bar at two faces each. I'll hide this face so you can see this contact more clearly. At the bottom, you can see that AIM has also generated a set of default behavioral properties for the generated contacts. Now, I'll select the second contact from the navigation bar. You can see that this contact is between the bar and the crankshaft at three faces each. It uses the same set of default behavioral properties as the first contact. Next, I'm going to show you how to automatically generate contacts yourself if you aren't using a template. I'm now at the same point in my process as I was earlier, but contacts were not automatically generated. Instead, I'm going to use the interface generator to generate contacts for the model. To begin, I'll right-click to add an interface generator. By default, AIM generates contacts for all the bodies in the model, in this case, all three volumes. I can also select specific bodies for the location. AIM sets a default tolerance, but you can also set this tolerance to a specific value. I'll have the interface generator create one set of behavioral properties that will be used by all generated contacts. When I click Generate Interfaces, AIM automatically creates contacts for the model using the default tolerance. AIM also automatically generates one associated contact behavior. When it's finished, you can see the generated interfaces here. Because I'm using the same geometry as earlier, AIM generated the same two contacts it did when I used the template. And both contacts are using the same set of behavioral properties. Contact behaviors are designed to be independent of a specific contact, so you can apply them to multiple contacts as needed for your physics solution. When you delete the interface generator, it removes the interface generator as well as all of the contacts and contact behaviors generated by it. I can also create contacts manually. To begin, I'll right-click to add a contact. I need to set the locations for the contact between the crank and the bar. I'll select these two faces and add them to location 1. And then select these two faces for my second location. I'll create a new contact behavior. If a contact behavior already existed, I could also select it here. Each contact behavior is created using defaults. You can change these default options to customize your contacts. For example, you can change the contact type from bonded to no separation. Additional behavioral properties are available if you click this filter icon. Now I'll create a second contact. I've set the locations to the faces of the crankshaft. I'd like to use the same set of contact behavior properties that I specified for the previous contact. So, instead of creating a new one, I'll select the contact behavior I just created for the last contact I added. This concludes this demonstration of the three methods for generating contacts in ANSYS AIM.